Good morning, good morning. It is Thursday. I always have to think before I tell you what day it is. <laughs> it is Thursday, June, because we've changed a month. Good morning, Ellen and Jeremiah. Good morning, Paul and Sue. It is Thursday, June 4th. Yes, so we are glad that you are here joining me this morning. And uh, good morning, Alicia and Oakley and Patty and Gary. We're glad that you are here. Good morning, Sandy. I hope you all have your coffee. Good morning, Donna. There's something about holding a cup of coffee in your hands that is just so, right? You just want to breathe in deeply. <laughs> good morning, Susanna. And good morning, Greg. We're glad that you are here this morning. All right, so this morning I am somewhere. Good morning, Rick and Marlene. Any ideas where I might be this morning? Uh, good morning, Carol. Yeah, so if you, I'll, I'll just give you a little look around because look at all of these growing things. Growing things make me happy, especially when other people grow them because I must confess I'm not that great at growing things. All right, so any ideas where I might be. Good morning, Brenda, and good morning, uh, Rob and Frida. And uh, we're so glad that you have joined me this morning. Yes, in a greenhouse. And yes, I am at the Francis's because the last time I was here, chickens, if you haven't checked out the chickens yet, the chicken devotion on Noah uh, and just walking with the Lord, that was one of my favorites because my co-host was a chicken. <laughs> so funny. Um, anyway, so then I always love coming here because there's always cool things happening. And, uh, and so I got to walk through the greenhouse and I was like, ooh, this would be a great place to do a Devo. And they're like, come on back. So I'm, I came on back. And so good morning, Peg and Tanya. And good morning, Vicki. So glad that each one of you is here this morning. I hope uh, some of you might still be in bed and so you haven't gotten your coffee yet and so you might be watching with one eye kind of like this and so I am I'm glad however it is that you are watching or maybe it's the middle of the afternoon and you are on your second or third cup of coffee of the day and that's good too good morning Lynn so uh, this morning we are uh, this week we've been sort of walking through um, worry and fear and what does the Bible say about that and what should our response be and uh, it seems like this is constantly one of those areas that I talk about probably because it's one of those things that I constantly am working through and uh, so I thought it was appropriate this morning that since we are in a greenhouse that I would read that passage from Matthew 6 about and it actually says I don't know if you can see this where did it go don't worry. So I'm reading from the New Century version this morning. There we go. Uh, this I actually this Bible I received in 1993, and some of you might be thinking I wasn't born in 1993. That's okay. Uh, I was. And that was graduation for me. <laughs> so anyhow, this is from New Century, and one of the cool things that I would encourage you to do is actually to read from various translations just to get um, a different understanding of the passage in different words. And I often find that sometimes I have to explain things in a couple different ways so that I actually get my mind wrapped around what the concept is. So this is New Century version, uh, Matthew 6. Uh, 25 it says so I tell you don't worry about food or drink right we're supposed to pray first before we read scripture so let's do this so Heavenly Father we come to you we ask that you would reveal your truth from your word it says your word is living and active sharper than do any double-edged sword piercing to the division of soul and spirit joint and marrow discerning discerning Lord the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So we ask, Lord God, that as we read your word this morning, that you would speak to us your truth. And not only that we would hear, but we would hear and, and appropriate, take it in and then respond. And so Father, we, we ask 
that your spirit, the helper, would meet with us today and help us to do what it says in your name. Amen. All right. So yeah, I was reminded about the Holy Spirit, the helper that we talked about yesterday can help us. Yeah, I was reminded of that seven, several times yesterday that the Holy Spirit is the helper. So here we go. Uh, so I tell you, don't worry about the food or drink you need to live or about the clothes you need for your body. Life is more than food and the body is more than clothes. Look at the birds in the air. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but your heavenly father feeds them. And you know, and you know, and you know that you are worth much more than, than the birds. You cannot add any time to your life by worrying about it. And why do you worry about clothes? Look at how the lilies in the field grow. They don't work or make clothes for themselves, but I tell you that even Solomon with his riches was not dressed as beautifully as one of these flowers. God clothes the grass in the field which is alive today, but tomorrow is thrown into the fire. So you can be even more sure. Isn't that wonderful? you can be even more sure that God will clothe you. Don't have so little faith. Don't worry and say, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? The people who don't know God keep trying to get these things and your heaven, Father in heaven knows you need them. The thing you should want most is God's kingdom and doing what God wants. Then all these other things you need will be given to you. So don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will have <laughs> because tomorrow will have its own worries. Each day has enough trouble on its own. And what was interesting, as I read through uh, this passage, one of the things that came to mind, uh, the word need like jumped off the page to me. Um, and I thought, where have I heard that word need before? And I was like, oh yeah. Let me read this passage to you. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. We talked about that last week. How our shepherd, the good shepherd, our father in heaven, will we have everything that we need in him. Like he'll supply all our needs, which is what? Philippians 4:19. Let me flip over to that just so you know that I'm quoting it correctly. All right, Philippians 4, 19 says, and now, and now I have everything and more. Oh, just wait, where did it go? There we go. And my God will use his wonderful riches in Christ Jesus to give you everything you need. And so we have, I love the testimony of scripture, right? And I often talk about this, the importance of knowing scripture, of reading scripture, so you can see what the, the story is all the way through. And the story hasn't changed. We talked about that, God never changes. And we see that because the story never changes, right? And so uh, you have the book of Psalms, you have David, King David, who says, the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need and then you have the gospel of Matthew Matthew a tax collector a money guy who is saying don't worry right that's the thing that he picked up from Jesus's Sermon on the Mount and he wanted people to hear right don't worry about money and clothes the tax collector is saying this right because your father in heavens are going to provide so much more right so when Jesus was was sharing on the Sermon of the Mount the tax collector is picking up the fact that we're not supposed to be worried about money. I find that really cool. And then you have flipping all the way over to Philippians where you have Paul in prison writing saying, my God's going to meet all your needs when we are in Christ. So when we choose to put our faith in Jesus Christ, says, my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So Christ has everything that we need when we put our faith in him. So when we flip back to Matthew, uh, a couple things stood out to me as I, I'm thinking about worrying. And what's cool is 
this was a youth Bible, so it has these wonderful little stories attached to it. So I actually read the story, um, and it's about a young man who was trying out for the basketball team, and he was like, all oh, like, am I going to make it? Am I going to make it? And that's, you know, for those of us who might not be trying out for teams, but maybe we're going for a job or we're maybe thinking about, um, you know, selling our homes and getting the right deal with it. And so uh, we can actually resound with what the young man is saying, even though we might not be in high school, but the idea is, am I gonna make the team, right? And so he's trying out and he's, he actually, it says that, um, that he found it difficult eating and sleeping and, <laughs> and he found it, he said that uh, he finally made the team and his friend said to him, Don't, see, didn't I tell you not to worry about it? And then it goes on to say, uh, easy for you to say. And suddenly a new worry came into his mind. What if I'm not good enough to start? Right? And it just seemed like once one worry was solved, then there was another new worry. And I was like, oh, Jenny. Oh, Jenny. <laughs> and I just was like, that is so true. It seems like once one worry is done, then all of a sudden, like there's always something new for our mind to worry about. And I was like, that's not good. That is just not good. And some of you are sitting there going, uh-huh, that's me. That's just not good, right? We worry, we worry, we worry, and we're like, okay, good, that's good, and it all turned out, and all of a sudden, something, another new worry comes up, and I'm like, I want that to stop. My God is able to meet all of my needs. And and so I went back to the passage and I started reading it again and it's and God took me back to Genesis when Adam and Eve sinned. And they covered themselves with fig leaves. And what did God do? He actually killed an animal and clothed them with animal skins. God provided right from the very beginning our need of a covering and right from the very beginning that set the example for us to truly be saved something had to die right for us to be covered an animal had to die we were covered with animal skins but for us to actually have eternal life Jesus had to die and his blood covers our sins and washes us white as snow so right 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 from the very beginning this passage says how much more will god clothe you if he didn't he started right from the very beginning clothing us when we needed it right he didn't leave us in our nakedness so even in our sinful state god covered us he knew what we needed and he provided not only for our physical covering but also for the covering of our sin how good is god and it goes on and i like I get excited about the Word of God because it's just so powerful and the sun's coming in at weird angles. Um, well, I'm the weird angle, the sun isn't. Uh, it says, and your Father in Heaven knows that you need them. Like I think sometimes we try to guess what other people need and I find myself often saying, Lord, would you help me to love that person the way you want me to love them, the what, what they need, right? Not what I need. Help me to love them how they need to be loved. And God already knows how to love me. And God already knows how to love them. Like he already knows. And then he provides. Like I'm guessing half the time. But he, he genuinely knows what you need. He knows the love that you need. And he knows the finances that you need. He knows um, the place that you need. As I was um, paddling yesterday and thinking about um, various things and how the Lord has moved me various places in my life. And I've often said, Lord, you know what I need. A friend of mine is, is changing jobs. Uh, he was a pastor and now he's, he doesn't know what he's doing next. And people are like, well, what are you doing next? And he's like, I don't know. And I remember being in that position and saying to people, I don't know what I'm doing next, but God knows what I need. And then he totally provided because I said, God, you know that I live in Canada, so I need a place to live. I need a car to drive because I live in the middle of nowhere and I need food to eat. And he more than met that need. Why do we forget? Why do we forget? Like God is the same yesterday, today and forever. So if he's met your needs in the past, if we are in, in Christ Jesus, he's going to continue to meet our needs in the future. 
So I don't know what, what you're worrying about today, what you're stewing on, um, what you're fretting about. Like it's this kind of feeling, right? Where our hands are just like, oh, I don't know, right? And we start to worry and God's like, I am the same. I've been looking after you. I've been looking after you. I've provided for your needs. And I look at these plants and how they are so well taken care of. They have the sun and it was interesting as I was I was in here I was listening to Paul and and Karen just talk about how to care for the plants and I'm like if earthly people care for plants like this how much more will God care for us right how much more will earthly will, will our Heavenly Father care for us how much more will our Heavenly Father care for us? How much more? How, right? And that's what it said twice in here. How much more will God care for us? And I know we've spent all week on worry, and I would love to say that I'll never have to talk on worry again, but that's not true because we do forget. I forget all the time. I need to, I need to preach it to myself. I actually put little notes up around my house to say, Jen, remember this. When you start to worry, remember this, remember this, remember this. And, and one of the things that I put on my, on my mirror was God is honored in the process. Because sometimes I'm a box checker, right? So I just want to check done, check done. And I have to remember that God is in the process. God is honored in the process. So I can't worry about checking it off. I actually have to, right, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added onto you. So I want to encourage you today to seek God first. Maybe you need to sing yourself a song, right? Uh, for me, it's often Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God and earnestly I seek you. My soul, like, and I just start, I have to praise God. I have to sort of orient myself back to him, which I'm going to talk about tomorrow. So make sure you tune in. So I, I know the command says don't worry because God will provide. And I know that's tough for some of us. But it was the same in the book of Psalms, in Matthew, and in the book of Philippians. It's the same today. So let's just pray. All right, Lord God, help us not to worry today. Help us to believe that you are the same yesterday. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. My God will meet all my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So why should I worry? Because how much more do you love us? How much more do you love us than the flowers of the field and the birds of the air that you feed and you clothe? So Father, would you, by the help of your Holy Spirit, <laughs> convict us when we start to worry, convict us, squeeze our hearts, and would you maybe send a bird or a flower to remind us how much you love us and you're gonna look after us. And I'm going to say, Thank you, Jesus, for how you've provided your blood that covers our sin, that we can be made right with God forever. Thank you. We pray this in the name of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I encourage you today to go for a walk. Look at the flowers. There was li there's lilacs here and lilies of the valley. And I just, I just wanted to stay right there and take in the smell and just how much more is God going to look after you? All right, my dear friends, have a really great day. Don't worry. All right, Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.